Okay. Looking at this, I have a, an expression that actually has several terms that I'm going to apply the distributive property to. And recall at the beginning of this lesson, I mentioned that the distributive property does apply to more than two terms. So however many terms I have in here, I handle it the same way. I take the expression that I'm multiplying, the term that I'm multiplying, and just go systematically and multiply by each term inside the parentheses. Starting from the first term, that gives me minus 3y squared times 4y cubed minus 3y squared times negative 6y minus 3y squared times 7. Now, just carefully going through each of these, since it's a little bit more complex, I have negative 3 times 4. Simple enough, that's 12. Remember that if I'm multiplying y squared times y cubed, what I'm going to do is add the exponents. And that's going to give me y to the fifth. So I'm going to add the exponents. In the next section here, I have minus 3 times minus 6. A negative and negative is going to give me a positive. So I'm going to have plus 18 y squared times y, that would be 2 plus 1, which is y cubed. And in my last section, I have negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. And then I don't have any y expression over here, so it's just y cubed. The final answer is five, uh, negative 12 y to the fifth plus 18y cubed minus 21y squared. Again, what I did is I took negative 3y squared times 4y cubed, and that gave me negative 12y to the fifth plus 18y cubed minus 21y squared. Today we discussed the distributive property, and this is something to really make sure you have down because you're going to be using it as I said, for the rest of the course and for much of math. Thanks for visiting educator.com.